defensive philosophical shift is happening in the NFL, and Mike McDonald's at the heart of it. That is what the Athletics' Ted Wynn wrote, uh, and he joins us now in the Emerald Queen Casino Sportsbook Hotline. Ted, we're happy to have you on. Your article was phenomenal. Um, we encouraged people to check it out yesterday when we teased that you would be joining us, but we have a lot to talk about when it comes to this team. I'll start, though, by taking a step back. What inspired this article? Hey, uh, well, you know, I think when we're moving on to this like little dead period we have between the draft and training camps, it gives me some time to really like research schemes that um, I've been wanting to just get more in depth about. And uh, Mike McDonald's scheme obviously has been one that I have been very interested in ever since he was hired back with the Ravens to be their defensive coordinator. Um, you know, I heard a bunch of things about what he's going to do and some interesting things and um, we kind of saw everything come into fruition last year when the Ravens were the top team in defense in almost every major statistical category. So I got to really sit down and break down film of what he did, talk to coaches that worked with him, talk to coaches that had to game plan against him. Uh, so that's what really kind of inspired this article, and I hope to do some more pieces like that on other coaches around the league um, during the offseason. Ted, I love the article, man. Um, I love hearing football talk. I, love wa- I like watching film. And um, you describing this defense, you, I mean, you don't even have to be in this defense. If you understand football a little bit, you, you know what you're talking about. And there was something that stood out to me um, that I tried to describe for the listeners yesterday. Hopefully I did it justice. It was, um, you mentioned pressure partners. W- what exactly does that mean? And, and describe it to me and everyone listening. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, I think with, um, when you when a defense typically teaches a blitz, they're teaching a blitz that's attached to a front. So the front tells everywhere where everybody where to line up, defensive linemen, uh, where they need to be if the defensive tackle is lined up head up on the guard or outside of the guard, uh, where the linebackers are, and then they teach the blitz from those positions. So this linebacker who's lined up in the B gap has to blitz and get into the A gap or uh, this nickel has to line up here and blitz here, and everybody kind of knows where they are in the blitz. Um, but what McDonald does is he teaches blitz patterns. So he's teaching, okay, instead of like this linebacker blitzing the A-gap, this player has to blitz in this A-gap. And if this player blitz in this A-gap, then this player on the weak side has to drop. So everybody kind of knows what each other is doing. So you could change up the front. You could change up um, which player is doing which on which job. So as they're teaching the blitz, they're just, you know, they might have one section. um, Let's say they split up the players into four different groups. They might have one group where they're just teaching this one blitz and they just keep mixing up the fronts. The next group, they're teaching this other blitz pattern and they're just mixing up the fronts there. So they're just really learning the blitz as a whole. And that way everybody's interchangeable. And for the defense, it's very inexpensive because we're learning this one pressure pattern. And then for the offense, they could – run it from a different, like, you know, 10 different presentations. So for the offense, they have to prepare for 10 different blitzes potentially, whereas the defense, like, we're just running this one thing. We're just running out of different presentations because the way we learned it, we could easily switch things up. Is that what inspired the Sean McVay of defense approach? You said, look, it's the philosophy of making everything look the same until it isn't. Yes, exactly. So what Sean McVay did when he first became the Rams, uh, head coach, and his offense is a little bit different now, but he didn't run a ton of different formations. He only, you know, maybe ran uh, three or four base formations, and out of those formations, he could, you could run all his plays, all his play actions, all his screens, and then you just add some eye candy to it with different motions and shifts and whatnot. And McDonald doesn't run a ton of different defensive fronts, but out of those fronts, he could run, you know, any pressure you want, and then he could add different layers to it by, uh, you know, switching this player here and there, and again, that just presents a different type of presentation for the offense that they have to be prepared for. You mentioned um, the Baltimore Ravens didn't blitz often, 13% of the time. That made them Mm -hmm. 22nd when it came to getting after the quarterback. But when I I remember watching that game against the Seahawks, it felt like they were always in the backfield. How do they create this pressure? Do they rely so much as on their defensive linemen? And if so, what do you think of this defensive line and how do you think they will be able to create pressure? Yeah, so I think they create a lot of pressure on offense just with all the different looks they give. So as an offense, you know, I have to be prepared for everything out of these fronts. And also with simulated pressures, which is 
pressures in which you're just bringing four. You're not bringing five, so technically it doesn't count as a blitz. But one of those rushers is coming from a second or third level. So you're bringing a linebacker or a defensive back, and you're dropping defensive linemen. So, um, you know, what you're trying to do is get the offensive line to slide in one direction and then, you know, blitz a, uh, a blitzer from away from the slide or somewhere they're not expecting. And, you know, if you're a Seahawks fan and you should expect to see, you know, some defensive linemen drop, you know, don't be surprised you see, uh, you know, Jaron Reed back there, you know, covering a hot route or something like that. Uh, that you have to have your defensive lineman drop if you're going to run a lot of simulated pressures. And um, the Ravens last year and what McDonald's is going to bring to the Seahawks is uh, a big simulated pressure package. Ted, I'm sure this isn't news to you, but one of the things that we talked about locally last year was, is the message being lost? And we didn't know if it was uh, a Pete Carroll message that had gone stale, if it was a lack of respect, which we didn't think that was the case. Um, If it was maybe uh, positional coaches or assistant coaches that weren't teaching it the right way. But it was clear that there was a lot of miscommunication, a lot of confusion, and that the message wasn't sinking into all players. So one of the things that intrigued me most about your article was a quote from Marlon Humphrey saying, he really, Mike McDonald, has everyone understand the whole philosophy. Did you get the impression, not just in writing this article, but in learning plenty of Mike McDonald prior to this article, that he's a really good teacher? Yeah, you know, even um, as he was becoming the Ravens defensive coordinator, the thing that I just kept on hearing about him is he's a great teacher and he understands uh, how players learn. And I think that's one of the things that um, it really separates him as a coach and really kind of defines the system. I think a lot of systems are defined by, uh, you know, like, for example, Seattle cover three or Fangio running a lot of too high. They're, they're defined by schemes and fronts and coverages. But I think with McDonald's system, it's really defined by how it's organized and how it's taught. Um, you know, you could apply any different schemes to the way he organizes things and the way he thinks through things. Um, I, I think um, ju- he just thinks about how players are going to be able to learn and execute on game day. And uh, I think that what's, that, that's what really separates him. And I think um, that's what's going to make him a great head coach is that uh, he understands what players are thinking and how he can um, just make it easy on them on game day t- as far as learning what they need to learn and just executing on the field. Ted, I'm sure that uh, McDonald is a a good teacher. I've heard, I always hear that about him when I talk to people. But there's something that he had over there in Baltimore that um, is irreplaceable, and that's <laughs> personnel. I mean, you got Queen mm-hmm. over there, Smith, Clowney, Matabuke, uh, Hamilton, Humphrey. He has some guys over there. So when you look at his defense, what he wants to do, then you look at the Seahawks roster, especially on defense. Obviously, we're talking about defense and what he wants to do. Um, what do you feel like the success rate is going to be? Because that Baltimore defense was something special. I know there's some guys over here as well, but I'm interested to see how you think they compare. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a adjustment period, and I wouldn't expect the Seahawks to all of a sudden become – um, you know, a top three type of defense right off the bat. Um, but again, I think, you know, with him being able to be so flexible and having a defense present so many problems for an offense as far as preparing for it and not knowing where the blitz is coming from, I think they should be better in, in that as- aspect of uh, just really testing out offenses. But again, you're not going to have Kyle Hamilton. You're not going to have uh, Roquan Smith, you know, guys that can just, you know, be blue chip players on a field. Um, obviously, you have some potential for that in, in uh, with guys like you know Witherspoon and Tyreek Woolen. If you could bounce back, and um, you know there's a lot of potential in these guys playing in, in this type of scheme and having um, an upgrade schematically. Uh, but it, it's I think again it's um, you know if you want to be excited about McDonald, just be uh, excited about just being able to be more organized and having uh, better game plans against. Um, teams, but it'll, it'll, it'll take some time for the Seahawks personnel to kind of catch up to the Ravens and uh, really have that defense challenging for a, a top three type of spot. Hey, out of curiosity, did you watch, obviously you had to look at some Seahawks defense and look at their personnel for your column. Did you watch a lot of Seahawks uh, games over the last year, two, three years? Um, yeah, you know, I think one of the teams that I, I cover closely were the 49ers, so yeah. I did watch 
Uh, I did. I have watched uh, a lot of Seahawks games in the last couple of years. Okay, well that that actually works for my question because we've looked a lot at the 49ers of have as having separated themselves from Seattle, and we always talk about it as being personnel. That personnel is the big thing, and that's happened in the trenches. Um, obviously, it's a little more complicated than that. Ted, when you look at Seattle, even if it's in those games, where do you see the Seahawks have ha- as having fallen behind? Because this was at one point, yeah, ten years ago, but at one point, the best defense in the league. Yeah, I think run defense has really taken a hit, and uh, you know I'm, I'm sure that's no surprise to you guys who uh, watch the Seahawks um, every week. But um, you know when you, you move on to that Vic Fangio system, you're kind of giving up some uh, some weight up front, and you're giving up a, a extra defender in the box, and you're saying we're going to try to limit the run game, but be really sound against the pass game. But unfortunately, um, they haven't limited the run game you know it's been uh i felt like in the last couple of years it's just been um you know really bad and leaky give, giving up a ton of ex- too many explosive runs especially in those niner games so i think um just getting you know some heavier guys in the, up front and maybe getting more uh, guys crowding the line of scrimmage on those simulator pressures can help um against the run